everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make a herringbone multi-strand like I did in the previous bracelet, but I decided this time I'd make a ne necklace to match. So I've just done a longer portion of herringbone, and then in this one I did one color of um, crystal and one type of crystal, so I used a rondelle and I used a little tiny cube. So I did one side crossing over and then the other color crossing over in the middle so that you get kind of a mixed look because you can't twist the necklace because if you twist the necklace then you twist the herringbone and it's not going to look right on your neck. So I decided to make it to where the crystals as I put them on would mix in the middle. So this is what this looks like and I think it turned out really pretty. And let's go ahead and look at the material list and see what it takes to make this. Okay, for this project today we will be using 6-0 seed beads. This is a Toho and it is a translucent frosted peach. I'm going to be using two types of crystal because I want the front of my necklace to be all crystal, but I want a little bit more texture and color. So I'm using a 2x2 two two Chinese crystal in the peach color and I am using a clear AB rondelle that is 3 by 2.5 millimeters and I'm going to do alternate strands of these two beads on the front. You can also use seed beads, you can use 3 millimeter crystals, uh, you could use little fire polish beads, they come in three and under millimeters. You can use whatever you would like. You don't have to do it all crystal. You can do it, you can mix it like I did with this bracelet with seed beads and crystals and um, just make it however you want to make it. I just thought that all crystal would be really pretty with my frosted peach 6-0 seed beads. Then I'm going to be using 11-0 seed beads and just a few 8-0. These are also Toho, and they are the galvanized permanent finish rose gold color, and so are the Eidos. And more than likely, we'll only use two to three Eidos. Then you can have a clasp of your choice. I am going to use this little clasp that I got from Shirley from um, Budget Beads. And she's closed right now because she's changing her name and changing her, moving her website. So she's closed this month. She may put it up on my new website, which is very new, and it has just a few things on it, but I'll leave a link to it. I'm not going to promise you, but she said she has a few. She doesn't have a ton, but maybe she'll list those for us. So we'll hope for that. But anyway, you can use any clasping you want. I recommend if you're not going to use a clasp like I am, this is kind of a flat clasp and it opens on both sides. It's kind of cool. So just a flat clasp that opens on one side like a box clasp or something like that will lay the herringbone flat nicely. If you're not going to use something like that, then I recommend a lobster claw clasp and a jump ring. A closed jump ring if possible because it's going to lay the herringbone nicer that way. So don't feel like you have to have one of these. You can use a lobster claw and a jump ring. You can use a toggle too, but sometimes toggles twist things and a necklace that has to lay a certain way like this one does, you don't want it to twist. So anyway, a clasp of your choice. And then I'm going to be using 10 pound nanofill and I'm going to be using a size 10 beading needle with this project. You can also use a size 12. You will need to extend your fire line or your nanofill. You can use fire line also, 6 pound, 8 pound. 6 pound will probably slide through the beads a little better. 8 pound would be more secure, so that's up to you. Um, we are going to need two pieces of thread. So we're going to start one side with a full wingspan and probably end up extending that. And then we will do the other side with a little bit shorter thread. So first, go ahead and thread onto your needle a full wingspan of thread. Spread your arms out from side to side and measure from your fingertips, your first arm across your chest, the length of your second arm to your fingertips. That's a wingspan. Let's get started with that. And we'll get the project going. Okay, 
After you have threaded your needle, we're going to begin this project by picking up two 60 seed beads onto our needle and drag it down to the end of your thread. Leave enough to tie a knot with and enough to hold on to. And that should just be a couple inches. And then go back up through the first bead on your thread on the tail side. Hold on to that bead and just pull your thread until the other bead lays right on top of it like this. And then we are going to sew back through these beads. So you're coming out of this one, we're going to go into this one on the same side you're coming out of. Pull your thread, make it nice and tight, and then go back through the first bead again. and then up through this one. Now I'm just making this very secure so I can get my clasping done. So now I have both of the threads coming out of the same side of the two beads here. And I'm going to take my tail thread and my working thread and I'm just going to tie a knot with the two of them. Making sure that my knot goes down on top of the beads in between them like this. And let me get you a little closer and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Just like this. Now I'm going to do that one more time. This is just to stabilize it because sometimes when you're trying to put the clasping on, it just, the two beads just kind of loosen up. So this is what we're doing here. Now we're just going to sew through it one more time. And I know it seems like a lot, but these are six O's, so you can put a lot of thread in them. And I'm going to come back around here and I'm just going to move my tail. So I'm coming out of this bead right here. I'm going to pick up an 11-0, a 6-0, and 8 and I'm going to drop this down. I'm just holding on to my beads and I'm just going to drop those beads down. Then I have separated my clasp and I'm going to sew this side on first. And then on my second half of my necklace, I'll sew this side on. You can leave them together if you have a clasp like this. However, it likes to fall and do all kinds of weird things. So I'm just going to use one half and I'm going to go up through it. Whatever clasping you're using, just go up through the hole on that clasp. Because you may not have what I have and that's okay. So now I have drawn, I'm just going to lay this out since it's kind of clumsy to work with. And you can see the order I have my beads in here. Okay, so I'm coming out of this bead. I have an 11 0, a 6 0, an 8 0, and I've come up through the clasp. Now I'm just going to come down into the 8 0 and the 6 0, just like this. And once I get through those two, I'm going to hold on to them and pull my thread through. And hopefully the fidgetiness of it will stop pretty soon here. And then I'm going to pick up an 11 0 seed bead and I'm going to go, I'm coming out of this bead here. You get your close. I'm coming out of this one here. So I'm picking up an 11 0 and I'm going to go into this one. And my tail is right there. I'm just going to ignore it and I'm going to pull my thread through. Lay it out so you can see what I've got. This is what it looks like. I'm going to sew back up through this one more time, but I'm going to pick up a couple of beads before I do that. So I'm going to pick up six O seed beads, two of them. I'm coming out of this bead. I'm going to go into this one, and then I'm going to go up into the 11 O, the 8 O, or the 6 0, then the 8 0, and then up through my clasp, just like this. And then I'll go around my clasping back down into the 8 0, the 6 0, the 11 0, and 6 0's on this side now. And now I'm just going to sew it back one more time without adding some six O's. 
So I'm just going to cross over, sew up through the two 6 0s on this side, the 11 0, the 6 0, the 8 0, and the clasp, just like this. I'm going to hold on to it, pull my thread, give a tug, go back down around. So I'm going around the clasping into the 8 0, into the 6 0, into the 11 0, and two 6 0s on this side now. Now my clasping is pretty secure because I've gone through it three times. If you want to do it again, of course you can do it again. But I'm going to start doing some herringbone here, but I want to add a little embellishment. So this is why we've put two sets, because my embellishment is going to lay right between the two sets. So we're going to go up through one bead. We're coming out of this bead. We're going to go up into this one and pull your thread through. Pick up an 11-0 seed bead and then go down into this one. And that 11-0 will pop right between your herringbone stitches, just like this. And then I'm going to go ahead and pick up two more 6-0 seed beads and we're going to do a herringbone stitch now. Because I've already placed this one here, we're just going to go up through it this 11 -0. and then we'll get into a groove of placing the 11 -0. So we're coming out of this stitch here. We're going to go up into this one, just one. I'm going to put my thumb and finger together and hold it as I pull my beads down. And then I'm going to make sure they lay out nice and pretty. And then I'm going to go up through this 11 -0 right here. And then on this side, we have to go up two beads. Oops, excuse me. Sorry about that. So I've just crossed over and gone up two beads. Now we're going to pick up two 6 0 seed beads. We're going to go up one bead. And we're going to hold on to our piece, pull our beads down, make sure they don't twist, make sure they lay out with the whole side out or up, however you view that, just like this. Pick up an 11-0 seed bead, cross directly over from where your thread is coming out. So you're coming out of this bead here, you're gonna cross directly over to this one, and then you're going to go up two beads on this side, and pull that 11-0 down between the herringbone stitch, just like that. And then again, pick up two 6 0 seed beads, cross over, go into one. On this side, you'll go into one. And then you'll pick up an 11 0 seed bead, and then you're going to cross directly over from where your thread is coming out and go up two beads, just like that. You'll always know when you have to go up two because it's obvious, number one. And number two, it'll be the bead directly across from where your thread is coming out. So you, you really can't miss. Now we're going to, we're coming out of here. We're going to cross over again, go into one bead, have two on your needle. Hold on to it because it steadies everything. I know it blocks my piece with my thumb, but it steadies everything and allows you to get some tension. So it's an important thing to do. And then we are just going to pick up an 11 0 seed bead, cross over, and go into two beads. Let's do one more, and then we will make several inches of this, and I'll tell you exactly how many units I'm going to make. And um, then I'll show you how to measure the center portion. But let's go ahead and do one more. Pick up two of your 6 0 seed beads. Cross over into one 6 0. Hold on to it, pull your thread through, make sure that they lay nice. Pick up an 11 0 seed bead, cross over and go up two. Now you can see what a pretty 
um, stitch that's turning out to be that's really nice and it lays really nice with this clasping and like I said you can use whatever clasp you want just make sure if you have one like mine that you're putting your love and our seed beads on the side where the clasping the pretty little rhinestones and stuff are up just like that now continue making these stitches Picking up two 6 seed beads, crossing over, going through one. Picking up an 11 crossing over, going through two. Continue doing that until you have 40 units or a short thread. So, I'm not quite to my 40 units. I intend to go 40 units, which each herringbone stitch, which is the double of two beads, is your unit. So you'll count one side until you have 40. However, I have about... Um, 36 right now, something like that. And what I'm going to do is my thread is getting short and I'm going to extend it now so that my extension will be inside these bigger beads and I won't have a big issue. You can extend it once we start doing the longer portion of the necklace, putting our crystals on, but it would be easier to do it now and we need a really long thread on this half of the necklace. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this down just a little bit on this side here and then <clears throat> leave enough so I can tie a square knot and then um, I'm going to get another nice long piece of my nano fill and I'm going to go a full wingspan. I didn't quite go a full wingspan before but I'm going to go another one since that's what I told you to put on. We'll want to do another full wingspan and what we're going to do is we're going to take the short thread and we're going to put the long thread under it. Let me get you a little closer. Then we're going to take the short thread and go underneath the long thread just like that. So you're just twisting the short thread around the long thread. Then we're going to cross them again and put the long thread over the short thread and go through and under, just like this. So this is a square knot. So you're just putting one thread over the other and then you're going to pull these shorter parts of your thread here and then pull on the longer part just gently until you get your knot tightened down but not tremendously tight. And then I'm just going to cut these two ends short. So that way, if I left them really long, then I'd pull the knot and it would be really far down my thread. So I'm just going to cut them here. You get a better pair of scissors, hang on. I'm going to cut them here so that my knot will be short and close to my bead so that it will go into it faster and I don't have to pull it through and deal with it while I'm trying to sew. So now I have these two little short ends and I'm just going to make some little tiny blobs on the end with some heat. You can use a thread burner if you'd like. Everyone has a lighter so I'm going to use a lighter. I'm going to place the end at the very bottom of the flame and just get it close. And then you will see that your nano fill or fire line will curl up into a little blob and you want it to remain small, not a huge blob. And then do it again on the other side. Just get it close and roll a little knot. And make sure that when you do this, your blobs aren't really tiny to the point to where it just pulls through. You want it to have enough so that it will stop when you pull. So what you're going to do now is you're just going to pull your two threads and have your two blobs come together like this into one blob. And this is very tiny. It looks bigger on my camera because of the magnification of the zoom, but it's very small. And now I can sew with it and I have a really long thread and what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue making my herringbone just like I showed you before until I have my 40 units and then I will have a whole bunch of threads still to start making my middle portion and 
will come back as soon as I've made my 40 units. Okay, so now I have completed my 40 units. You can see I'm coming out of this last herringbone stitch and I do not have an 11 of seed bead on there. So we're going to remedy that situation because normally we'd put another set on and then we put our 11 0. But we're going to put our 11 0 just going through these two and then we're going to secure these last few um, herringbone stitches just so they're ready for our strands that we're going to put in the center. So let's do this. We're coming out of the, our last unit here. And like I said, I made 40 units. This is going to make about an 18 inch necklace is what I'm going for. If you want longer, then you'll need to make more herringbone. So just measure how many units are in an inch. If you want an inch more, make that many units on both sides. So this is what we're going to do now. We're coming out of this bead here and then we're going to go up through this single side here. Just one bead on the other side right next to where you're coming out of and then we're going to pick up an 11-0 seed bead and go back into the bead we started in and pull your 11 -0 down. Of course it wants to be stubborn. There we go. So now I have my last little stitch on. What I'm going to do now though is I want to secure some of these end stitches. So I'm going to go up like four or five, probably five beads here. And I'm going to go up all five of them on this side. I'm coming out of this side. I'm going up five on this side. And then I'm just going to pull my thread through. And then I'm going to go through this 11 -0 seed bead in the center here of the unit I'm coming out of. Pull the thread through. And then go down all five on this side. This is just going to kind of give me a little bit better base to put my strands through my last few herringbone stitches. Now, just to secure everything more, I'm going to put a little knot in the middle of this thread bridge right here. So I'm coming out of this bead, I'm going under this little thread bridge between the beads. I'm going to pull my thread, and of course I have a long thread so it's getting caught on stuff. I'm going to pull my long thread into a loop, go through that loop with my needle, just slowly pull your thread back through and pull a knot down on that thread bridge. And then we're going to go back up. This time I'm going to go up six beads on this side. And then through an 11 0. Or not an 11 0, but the 11 0 on that unit. And then we're going to go down all six on this side. Or how many am I going through? One, two, three, four, yeah, man, yeah, six or seven. Doesn't matter. Just make sure that you cross over directly and go through the same amount of beads on both sides. Just like that. And now we can set this aside and we're going to make exactly the same thing for the other side. We're going to start it exactly the same way, putting the clasping on, and you can just back up the video and watch it. Just put on your other half of your clasping or your jump ring, just sew up through your jump ring instead of through your um, clasping. Or if you're putting your lobster claw part on, just sew up through that, but just sew up through and go ahead and start making your herringbone exactly the same as we just did on this side. You do not have to extend, so start with about, take your needle off of this long thread and start with about mm, a wingspan, somewhere around there, of thread and go ahead and make your herringbone. Don't extend, you don't need to and your thread, I mean. And we're just going to set this aside and go ahead and work on that. When we have 40 units and our clasping on our next one, we'll be back. Okay, so I have finished my second half of the necklace, just like I made the first half. Put on my clasping, did my 40 units, and now I'm coming out of this last bead here. 
and I'm going to secure this just like I did the other side, but this time we'll tie it off and um, then we'll just leave the thread, we'll, t we'll cut the thread off. So what we're going to do is we're coming out of this last bead here. I'm just turning it over and I'm going to go into about four beads, five beads, doesn't matter how many, just go through several on this side and then pull your thread through and then cross over into the bead directly next to the one you're coming out of right here and go up those beads. And then we're going to tie a knot. So just go underneath this thread bridge here and pull a knot and then and you can see I have a thick thread bridge because I secured this last unit a couple times. So you can do that too if you'd like. It doesn't really matter. But now I'm going to go up five beads. I just like my ends to be pretty secure. And then I'm going to go directly across and go back down. Then I'm going to tie one more knot on the thread bridge. Go underneath it, make a loop, pull it down, and then cut your thread off. I'm going to cut it shorter than that. And maybe a little shorter than that. And then I'm just going to burn this down, this little tail piece of thread. I'm going to burn it down, just getting the flame closed, not lighting it on fire, and letting that little piece roll down without burning any of my thread bridge. And then I can set this aside. <clears throat> now, you're going to want to grab your other half that you made previously, and you still have a really long thread on that. You're going to put your needle on that thread. And then we're going to measure on a beading board exactly how much room we want in between our two ends joined by a strand of crystal. So I'm going to go ahead and um, thread my needle and then I'll show you how okay, to Okay, so don't this. laugh at my really beat up ugly bead board because I've had this thing for about 15 years and it's really beat up. But anyway, this is what I'm trying to accomplish here is I have put both of my side, sides of my necklace on the nines. That means it's nine inches on each side and including the middle. So that means my finished necklace will be 18 inches long. So what that also means is I need to make my strand um, from one end to the other this long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting some beads on my long thread and then I can put it back on my bead board or I can just measure how many inches this is and make the inch that many inches and then attach it. And then from that measurement we can make all the rest of them the same length. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this end off, leave that end on. This is the end with my long thread and I think I'm going to start with my little tiny crystals my two by two cubes and I'm just going to start stringing them on to my needle. So I'm just going to pick up a whole bunch of them and I'll just drop them down directly to my necklace and continue picking them up until I think I have about enough and to make that measurement. I'll put it back on my bead board and check it again against the other side and I will show you how to do that until I get the length that I want. And then from there, you can just measure each strand after with the same length. You just lay it out and do the same length. However, if you're using all the same beads, like I'm going to use these 2x2 two two crystals. Each time I make a strand of just 2x2 two two crystals, I can count how many my first one was. My second one, my these beads are a little bit bigger, so I'll make it the same length as my cuboid, and then I'll count how many, or not my cuboid, but my cubes, and I'll count how many were on that strand of these, and then I'll know how many to put on each one. 
So let's go ahead and pick up a whole bunch of whatever beads you have, seed beads, crystals, whatever, and then we'll measure and I'll show you how to attach it to the other okay. side. So I have strung my little crystal cubes until I have the length that I need. And the way I am determining the the length I need is laying back out on my um, beading board here and I want an 18 inch necklace so I know if I go to the 9 on either side 9 inches from the 0 to the 9 and from the 0 to the 9 here that's 18 inches and that's how big I want my necklace now if you're a very very small person you'll want to go to the 8 and make 16 inches if you're a bigger person you'll want to go to the 10 and make 20 inches so you can lay it out and measure it and you can make this portion shorter if you'd like and more crystal however you want just lay it out and see what it's going to look like if you don't have a beading board then you can use a measuring tape and straighten it out and measure against your measuring tape or use a ruler or whatever you'd like to do just so that you know that you have the length that you desire then i'm going to take this off the beading board here and I'm going to lay out my piece and I am going to lay out both sides making sure they're not twisted or upside down or anything else. You want your little 11 O's on top here and I've lost my needles. So let me put this on and we're going to attach these but because you can't twist this one like we did the bracelet and you don't want them to just lay in a big glob. Instead of going straight across this time, let me get you closer. Instead of we're coming out of here, we're going to go directly into this side on this one. We're going to cross the beads. So basically what I'm talking about is instead of going into this side, I'm going to go into this side first. So let me center this and get you closer making sure nothing's twisted and then I'm going to go up into this side of the bead so the opposite side of the side I'm coming out on the other side of the necklace and I'm going to go up six beads this way it gives me enough beads as I make my um, other strands to go through individually work my way down the herringbone each time so that all my thread isn't in between two beads. So I'm going up six, I'm coming out here, I'm going to go directly into this little 11 o seed bead on top, and then I'm going to go down the same amount of beads on this side. Just straight across from where you came out, go back in, and now we have a strand that goes from just tighten that up a little. It's going to move for a little bit, but now it goes from this side to this side. And that way, as I put my beads on, next time I'm coming out here, I'll go over here, and then that way they'll have a nice little cross in the middle. So this time now, as I'm coming out of this side, I'm going to use the rondelle beads. Now I've counted how many beads I have on this cube one, so every time I make a cube strand, I will use the same amount of beads. I will put my rondelles on and measure it to this strand the best I can and then count those so that I know each time I pick up my rondelles how many rondelles I will need. So I'm going to go ahead and string this, put these on here and I will come back and show you how to attach it to the other side. Okay, so now I've made my strand of rondelles and I have, for my cubes, I have 67 cubes and for my rondelles I have 59 and what I've decided to do is I'll connect this one and show you how to do that and each time I make another strand I'm going to pick up two more beads than the amount that I did before so this cascades a little bit down so maybe even one but that's just a design effect that I'm going to try so first let's let's concentrate on our strands here. So I've made my strand of rondelles basically the same length as close as I could get to the strand of my cubes. And now I'm going to, I'm coming out of this side here, I'm going to go into this side here. So let's get close so that they just cross over each other. So now I'm going to go up six beads on this side. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, and pull my thread through. And you can see they cross each other, just like that. And then I am going to go through the 11 0 here. So I'm coming right out of this bead. I'm going to go through the 11 0. And then I'm going to go down six beads on this side. And next time I come up, I can go up five. So that I'm passing my thread through herringbone at different places so that it doesn't get really thick in one spot. So now I have my thread here and I'm going to do my peach um, beads again, my cube beads. And I think because I want it to lay just a little bit longer as they cross through, I think I'm going to go one extra bead. So instead of 67, I'll do 68. And then um, I'll just, every time I come through the cube side, I'll do cubes. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up my 68 cubes and then we'll be back and I'll show you how to go back into the other side and then we'll just continue from there. Okay, so I've made my next cube strand and this time I picked up one more bead than I did last time. And I'm just going to cross it right over the top of the other two that I did here. So I'm going to go from this side of my herringbone to this side, just like I did last time. And this time I'm going to go up five beads. So one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to exit out the side of the herringbone. And let me get you closer. So I'm just going up five beads here. And I'm going to pull this through and tighten it. So this one should lay right on top of the others here. It's going to look kind of funny because it's a little bit longer than the other one. Make sure you have no slack and then come through the 11 0 on your herringbone here. and then down five beads on this side. And now I'm coming out where my um, crystal rondelles are. So I'm going to pick up crystal rondelles and I'll pick up just one more bead than I did the previous time. And then I'll cross over and go through this side and go up five beads, come down five beads and continue. Then I'll do another strand of cubes and we'll just continue doing that until we have the amount that looks nice. So you can do as many or as few as you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and continue and I'll show you exactly how many I end up with. Okay, I just wanted to reiterate that as you make your next strands, each time you've done a double through the same unit, so say we started with six, we went through six on this side, and went through six on this side, the next time you make a strand, you go through five, you go through five on this side, five on this side, come up and do five on this side as you're making your strands. And then the next one, you'll come up four and cross over, go down four, same on this side, so that you're moving towards the bottom of your herringbone. If you decide to do more strands than just going through that amount of beads, then you can start working your way back up. That way you're passing your thread through the herringbone sections without loading them up. So I just wanted to make sure you knew that. So I've made my last strand and now I'm going to go up five on this side, or four on this side, excuse me. And then I'll come down four and do the same on this side. Okay, so as you can see, I've made about as many strands as I want on this. I have made four strands of each color. So I have eight strands of crystal on here. And as I was doing it, crossing over on top of the last strands that I made and adding an extra bead to each strand each time I made it. So now I have this little conglomeration here of crystals that will lay really pretty, um, kind of crisscrossy and just, just really pretty on the neck. So <clears throat> what I'm doing now is I just came out after making my last strand. I'm coming out of this last bead here. 
and know too that I did have to extend my fire line. You'll do it exactly like I showed you earlier in the video, but you'll just do it during the strand process, making sure that your blobs are really little, then your crystals will pass over it just fine. Now, I'm coming out of this 60 seed bead right here. There's a thread bridge right between the 60 seed beads in the herringbone stitch and I'm going to go right underneath that thread bridge and I am going to pull my thread make sure that your last strand is tight and it's where you want it to be and then tie a knot because once you've tied your knot then you can't move your crystals around anymore on your last strand now I've tied that knot and I'm going to go back up I think I'll cross over since I came out of this crystal I'll go on this side here and go up a couple of beads. I've gone up four and there's a thread bridge right here between the 11-0 and the um, herringbone stitch right here. I'm going to grab it, <clears throat> tie a knot, and then I'm going to go up these six O's, see if that was a good spot to do that. You can turn your piece over and tie, well that dragged it right in so it's fine, but you can also turn it over I'm coming out here. I can grab these thread bridges on the back here. You can see there's a little thread bridge right there. You can tie a knot on that thread bridge too if you're afraid that you're going to be able to see your knots at all. And then just sew back up into the six O's and pull that thread down. So you can knot and sew up your herringbone as much as you want until you feel like it's nice and secure. And go up a couple more on this side. Come here, come here, come here. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to cut this down, leaving a little tag. Well, actually, I don't have my lighter nearby, so I'm just going to cut it down close to my beads. You can cut it down and then roll it in with your lighter. That would be a better way. But hopefully you could see what I was doing. I wasn't paying attention. I'm so sorry. Okay, so now what I have done is made a nice little multi-strand necklace. So I'm going to put my clasping together here. Come here, a little clasp. Okay, now I'm going to put this one on, dangle it around. See when it lays out on your throat. Oops, oopsie. You can see my mess. When it lays out on your throat, it's going to be nice and pretty like this. And that's what that looks like. And I think I'll probably, well, make sure you clasp it correctly. I didn't. Oh, well, yes, I did. It's just twisted. So that it doesn't twist. No matter what clasping you're using, make sure that your herringbone is in the proper way when you put it on your neck so it's not all twisted and weird. And that looks really cute. And I think I'll probably make a pair of earrings for this. But um, my last bracelet, this will, would have matched if I had the same beads. I could have used the peach color beads and the same beads that I did in this one and have a matching bracelet. So you can reference this video, and which is called the Easy Multi-Strand Bracelet. It's the one that I um, posted previous to this one. And you can make this a matching bracelet to this necklace very easily with that tutorial. And that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this project. See you later. Bye-bye.